What's going on guys, Bangalore here coming back at you with another video and today we're back doing another NFL redraft. This is the 2014 NFL Draft do-over. Before we get into this, I want to say that this is all, of course, speculation. This is not real. I edited the players to be on the team in Madden just for visual and aesthetic purposes, although that is redundant. What I want to say is for each one of these individual draft picks, um, I want to say a couple things. There are questions in the comment section. And I feel like I should help you guys understand this a little bit more. So, one, when we do, go through this draft do-over and do this redraft, there are a number of players that could be selected at that spot. You know, there are a number of players who fit that role, who are at that talent level at that spot. But I used my best judgment, figured out where they were weak at, at that time, maybe what position they drafted, uh, either in the first round, second round, later in the draft, to kind of help fill those positions. So they went into the draft with a certain mindset to draft set positions or off their big board or however they did it. So I tried to base a lot of my picks off that. Also, you got to go in with the mindset of how good the players are now, but not back then. So for example, um, let's just say in the 19, what was it, 83 draft where Dan Marino wasn't the first pick. Uh, I don't think he was at least. I think that he, he slipped to the Dolphins. Well, he would go number one, obviously. But then let's just say the next pick. Let's just call it the Jets. Let's say the Jets drafted player B, right? And then later in the third round, they draft player C. And then player C is very, very good. They don't have player C on their team anymore, so they would have to draft him with that number two overall pick if he was good enough to warrant that selection. So last time I had the Broncos taking Justin Simmons in the first round, even though they drafted him later, um, it's like he's not on their team because it, we're not up to that point in the draft yet. We're going through the draft. I'm only happening to just show you guys the first round, but enough rambling. We're going to get into this. With the first overall pick, the Houston Texans took Jadavion Clowney, and in this redraft, they're going to select Khalil Mack, outside linebacker out of Buffalo, defensive end. I think he fits exactly what the Texans want to do incredible player one of my favorite players in the nfl and he is proven to be one of the best defensive player of the year last year and you could argue that aaron donald is right in that same league and they are khalil mack and aaron donald i think are the two best defensive players in the nfl there are people who are very close even jj watt on the texans but i think his injuries have held him back he's up there with that talent level of course but you can't say that he's as good as aaron donald or khalil mack when he's played like five games over the last two seasons Khalil Mack is an incredible player. I think he fits the bill for this number one overall pick over Jadavion Clowney. Let's move on to the Rams at number two. So the Rams would take Greg Robinson, an offensive lineman out of Auburn. You could play him at either tackle or guard, and he had a tremendous combine. Extremely athletic, looked like a big run-blocking mauler of a tackle. Um, and those have pretty much proven to not work out in the NFL, unfortunately, for a lot of teams like Eric Flowers, big mauler type not working out so much for the Giants, needless to say. But Maulers, at least at tackle, aren't usually the best option for franchise uh, corners on your offensive line. So the Rams are going to go a different direction than Greg Robinson here. I think it's somewhat obvious who they're going to select. But let's go ahead and get into it. The Rams select Aaron Donald, defensive tackle out of pit. I guess he's technically playing end right now because they're in a 3-4 and he's not the nose tackle. I think that's Michael Brockers. But Aaron Donald is incredible. Very, very, very good player. I can't say that enough. His grades on pro football focus have been unbelievable. The amount of pressure he gets, he's a pretty much unblockable player. One-on-one, -on -one, there isn't even a chance. He's way too strong, way too quick, way too athletic. Incredible player. The Rams had to take him at, I believe, number 12 um, later on. They can't obviously wait that long this time. Aaron Donald is easily a top five pick. This time the Rams snag him up at number two before he can fall to a different team. With the th number three overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars would take Blake Bortles, a quarterback out of UCF. Uh, and now Blake Bortles, he's been something in the NFL, combining for, uh, with Tom Brady, of course, five Super Bowl champions, multiple MVPs, multiple passing titles, an incredible career so far. But... Needless to say, I think the, the uh, Jaguars will go a different direction here. And with that number three overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Derek Carr, quarterback 
Fresno State. You could argue that he could have been the number one overall pick just because of how valuable quarterbacks are, and the Texans were in need of a quarterback at the time for sure. Not to say that they're technically not anymore, or they wouldn't be in the 2015-2016 NFL draft. Derek Carr is a very good option. This time he falls to the Jags at number three. I don't think the Texans could take him at all, you know, due to the whole Carr thing with David and the start of their franchise. But I think Khalil Max is a little bit more worthy of that pick. And then Derek Carr, he's been a very good player for the most part in the NFL. He's got a lot of good pieces around him. He's been having a pretty bad year so far, I would say. Still a good player. I think the Jags take him, and uh, they get themselves a good piece. My voice is totally going. But yeah, good pick for the Jaguars. Let's move on to the number four overall pick. Also, I think it's you know needless to say, trade ups and trade downs are already accounted for. We're just going off of base draft order. So regardless of you know who trades up where, as the Bills traded up to number four to get Sammy Watkins, in this instance, receiver out of Clemson, they're still going to trade up, even though the same pick might not be made. But let's go on to that pick with the fourth overall pick in the 2014 NFL Draft do-over. The Buffalo Bills select Odell Beckham Jr., receiver out of LSU. Odell Beckham has been incredible since coming into the league. He was a little bit injured for a, a few games in his rookie career, rookie season. I, I'm kind of screwing up here. But he came on and dominated the NFL in his rookie season after being healthy. His second year, dominant. Third year, dominant. Odell has been absolutely incredible to watch. Injured a lot of this year, obviously out for the season. But when you come in and you play your first 25 games of your career and you have the most yards, catches, and touchdowns, you're a pretty special player. And even though it's so crazy to think that a player like that who leads in yards, catches, and touchdowns in the first 25 games of an NFL career isn't a, even a top three pick in his draft class in a draft do-over is incredible. But when you have players um, like this 2014 NFL draft class does, I think it's been one of the best classes ever so far in terms of talent. It's kind of incredible. But yeah, the Bills get themselves a superstar receiver here, not Sammy Watkins. It's going to be Odell. Let's move on to the number five overall pick. And the Raiders would pick at number five, and they would take Khalil Mack, outside linebacker slash defensive end, out of Buffalo. Here's the issue. Khalil Mack is no longer on the board. The Raiders couldn't go him if they wanted to, and trust me, I think that they would. But in this draft do-over, the Oakland Raiders select Jadavian Clowney, defensive end out of South Carolina. Also, you can call him an outside linebacker, just like you could with Khalil Mack. He was pretty much the consensus number one overall player going into this draft. Just an incredible athlete with such amazing bursts, strength, size, power. Just such an amazing combination of all those skills. And I debated on having the Texans take him again with that number one overall pick. Just based on his scheme fit and potential. But... Couldn't, went Khalil Mack instead. And now he falls to the Raiders at number five. The Raiders say, hey, we couldn't get Khalil Mack. Let's pretty much get the next best thing, and that is going to be Jadavian Clowney. With the sixth pick in the 2014 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons would select Jake Matthews, an offensive tackle out of Texas A&M. And while he's been a somewhat solid player in the NFL, I don't think he would warrant a top 10 pick, let alone a top six pick with the Atlanta Falcons. So in this 2014 NFL Draft do-over, the Atlanta Falcons select Taylor Lawan, tackle out of Michigan, one of the best tackles in the NFL, and he's only 26 years old. He has been incredible since coming in and being drafted uh, for the Tennessee Titans. He's been a great, great player. He's super young on that amazing Tennessee Titans offensive line. Still got to protect Matt Ryan, give him time to throw to Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu and uh, Austin Hooper and whoever else is on that team and hand the ball off to Devontae Freeman, Tevin Coleman, things like that, and even throw the ball to both of those guys quite a bit. But Taylor Lewan, I think, is a clear pick here. One of the best tackles in the NFL. He falls to the Falcons at number six. With the seventh overall pick in the draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would select Mike Evans, a receiver out of Texas A&M. Back-to-back Texas A&M players went in the draft. Of course, Johnny Football made him look just so damn good. But Mike Evans has been a superstar receiver in the NFL. I hate to spoil this pick already, 
But in this 2014 NFL Draft do-over, the Tampa Bay Bucks select Mike Evans, receiver out of Texas A&M, has been absolutely incredible for the Bucks so far. A six foot five monster with a little bit of speed to him, but basically he's going to go up there. He's going to get the ball. He's going to get open. He's going to block for you. He's been so so good. Only 24 years old. So many people in this draft are incredibly young, even though Taylor Lewan is 26. Mike Evans in the same draft class is only 24, and he's been just as good, if not better, overall. So yeah, Bucks are not going to change this stud pick. Let's move to number eight. Oh boy, Brown's going to Brown, right? And I'm not even sure if it's just, you know, the Browns out here, out here being the Browns. You know what I mean? Because maybe some of these players had potential, and just because of the system with no one else talented around them at all, they were never put in a place to succeed. Then again, you have some players put in equal position to play out of their minds and become incredible players. So it seems like just per usual... Brown's gonna Brown. They take Justin Gilbert, a cornerback out of Oklahoma State. He was a really exciting college player to watch. Interceptions were made. Touchdowns were made because of those interceptions, and he returned kicks and housed those. He was a very fun player to watch, but he just didn't care about football, and the Browns doing their, like, research and, or whatever didn't figure that out, so they can't take Justin Gilbert here. We're gonna go. We're gonna go someone else, and that someone else is going to be Devonte Freeman, running back out of Florida State. He think, or I think he dropped until the third round, fourth round, something like that. And he's been one of the NFL's best since being drafted. Has shown that he has the speed, the quickness, the agility. Um, he gets out into space. He makes people miss. He's a receiving threat out of the backfield. He breaks tackles. He's really the complete package of what you'd want in a modern day running back incredible player. He is the pick here for the Browns instead of abysmal Justin Gilbert. Replacement for Trent Richardson? I think so. Big shoes to fill, I know, right? With the ninth overall pick, the Vikings would take Anthony Barr, outside linebacker slash defensive end, and now he's an outside linebacker pretty much for the Vikings. He's been good for the Vikings overall, I would say, but in this 2014 NFL redraft, the Minnesota Vikings select Anthony Barr, outside linebacker out of UCLA. He's been the guy for them, for the Vikings. He's been such a good, explosive player. He showed such ability to rush the passer at UCLA. So it surprises me that his finesse moves and power moves are graded at such a low level, but he's kind of shifted into that coverage guy. He's 6'5", with just tremendous speed, and uh, he hits hard. Aaron Rodgers can, uh, can say talk about that. But... Um, yeah, I see no reason why the Vikings would change this pickup at all. With the 10th pick, the Detroit Lions would select Eric Ebron, tight end out of UNC. I would say he's been less than what you'd expect out of a top 10 pick for the Detroit Lions so far. So in this draft do-over, the Detroit Lions select Jason Verrett, cornerback out of TCU. Also, my audio may have been out of sync up until now. Uh, I've just made an error to correct, or I've made a correction to that error just now. Also, if I edit it correctly, you guys wouldn't have noticed, so don't worry about this. But Jason Vrett is the pick out of TCU. He's been very, very good. He was a first-round caliber guy that ended up slipping. And um, I think he could have been, you know, easily taken in this range right here. Lions get themselves a very good cornerback, one that if he can stay healthy, can develop into a top player in the NFL has yet to do that because of so many injuries, but that's not to take away from his abilities. I think the Lions take their corner here, um, and they get a very good one in Jason Verrett. At number 11, the Tennessee Titans would take Taylor Lewan, a tackle out of Michigan. Taylor Lewan is no longer on the board. He went a little bit earlier to the Atlanta Falcons, so in this draft due over the Tennessee Titans select Ryan Shazier, a middle linebacker out of Ohio State, one that's just shown, again, tremendous athleticism. That's kind of what the NFL first round is, pretty much. One of the fastest players in the NFL, and he plays linebacker. Absolutely insane. Very good player. Blossoming for the Steelers of, as of late. And uh, yeah, Titans get themselves a quality middle linebacker. At number 12, the New York Giants would select Odell Beckham Jr., uh, a receiver out of LSU, and as much as I love the New York Giants, that is my favorite team, and as much as it pains me that I had to take Odell and move him to another spot, 
Hopefully this pick will make up for it as a very talented player is still on the board. And the Giants with this pick will select Zach Martin, right guard out of Notre Dame. He's proven to be one of the best players in the NFL. And it's kind of incredible that he slipped to this spot and you could have maybe mocked him to the Lions. But I would say other than that, maybe the Browns, but other than that, I think that this is the best spot for him as he's dropped. It's a, it's a position that doesn't carry as much weight as some of the other positions we've seen. So even though Zach Martin is one of the best players in this draft, one of the best players in the NFL, and maybe the best at his position, I think it does make sense that he falls to 12, and maybe there's bias there. I wanted him to go to the Giants, but I was doing this draft, and he just happened to be on the board. So I'm like, it's probably a good pick. Giants help out their offensive line a little bit. With the 13th pick, the Rams would select Aaron Donald, an absolute steal out of pit. Aaron Donald clearly is no longer on the board. So with this redraft, the then St. Louis Rams select Sammy Watkins, receiver out of Clemson. He was traded up um, with the Bills to be selected at that number four overall spot. And he's not been a top five player, again, partially because of injuries, but he's a young player. He's one that's been pretty good for the Rams in select games. And I know he plays on the Rams now, but technically during this timeline of 2014 in the draft, he doesn't. So the Rams take themselves a player they're clearly very high on, at least now. That's why they went out and traded for him. But in this situation, they're going to go out and draft him. Get him on their team here. Good pick for the Rams, I think. With the 14th pick, the Chicago Bears would select Kyle Fuller, a cornerback out of Virginia Tech. And again, maybe it's due to injuries, but Kyle Fuller has not developed into the player that uh, the Bears obviously want him to be. And it is, it is because of injuries. And when he's been healthy, he hasn't been insane. That secondary hasn't been insane. The safeties have played well, but the cornerbacks, not so much. So with this redraft selection, the Chicago Bears will take Brandon Cooks, receiver out of Oregon State. You could argue that he could have been the pick to the Rams just to pick a go. But with Tavon Austin, I don't see the Rams taking another Tavon Austin-like player in terms of being small and being extremely quick. I think Sammy Watkins makes more sense. And that's why I think Brandon Cooks makes uh, so much sense for the Bears here. You think about Alshon on the team at the time and Brandon Marshall. And based on how that entire situation played out with Brandon Marshall then going to the Jets and then Alshon being on the team with pretty much no one else, I think Brandon Cooks makes a ton of sense here for the Chicago Bears. With the 15th pick in the draft, though, the Pittsburgh Steelers would select Ryan Shazier, a middle linebacker out of Ohio State. He's no longer on the board. He went a little bit earlier to the Titans. So to make up for it in this draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Timmy Jernigan, a defensive tackle out of Florida State. One that's played very, very well, played well for the Ravens. Of course, is now on the Philadelphia Eagles and has played even better. Steelers get themselves an interior force to be reckoned with with this selection. With the 16th pick in the draft, the Dallas Cowboys would select Zach Martin. Currently, I think one of the top two guards in the NFL He's, of course, no longer available as he was snagged by the Giants with the 12th pick. But it doesn't actually end up working out that poorly for the Cowboys, as they will take Joel Batonio, offensive tackle slash offensive guard out of Nevada. You could play him at a number of different spots, which is why he's so valuable to any offensive line that he plays on. In this case, I'm sure he's probably going to be the replacement for what would have been Zach Martin. Get him on the offensive line and build up the trenches the way that they'd like to. Joel Batonio... Very, very good player. He's just not quite on the level that Zach Martin is, but a very, very good player nonetheless. Not a bad pick at all for the Cowboys. With the 17th pick, the Baltimore Ravens would select C.J. Mosley, an inside linebacker out of Alabama, who's, I think, played pretty well for the Ravens. But with this re uh, pick in the redraft, the Baltimore Ravens select C.J. Mosley, an inside linebacker out of Alabama. He makes the most sense for them here. He's played well. Well enough to the point of where you're not going to replace him with another player. He fits their scheme. He's been tremendous, I would say, for the Ravens for the most part. They're obviously not going to change this pick, I don't think. At number 18, though, the New York Jets would select Calvin Pryor, who played very, very well for them uh, to start off. Was, was really, really solid. However, they showed that they don't want him as they nearly cut him and ended up, I believe, trading him to the Browns. For almost nothing. Unless he was cut and the Browns just picked him up. I'm fairly certain he was traded for though. 
But in this pick, in this redraft, the Jets will select Hashan Clinton Dix, safety out of Alabama. Of course, nicknamed Haha. Not even a joke. That's just a fact. He's been pretty solid for the Packers. I guess he's regressed slightly, but he is still young. He's shown that he can play at that high level. Jets get themselves a good player, one that fits their system, one that can play safety, one that can do what Calvin Pryor did if you want him to, uh, although I probably wouldn't play him in the box as much. Jets get themselves Clinton Dix, though. Good player. At number 19, the Dolphins would select Jawan James. I said his name here. Jawan James, offensive tackle uh, in the draft. He hasn't been incredible for the Dolphins. He's played pretty well, but I think it makes more sense to go a different direction. And that different direction is going to be Juice Landry, a receiver out of LSU, one that they would take in the second round. And again, in this timeline, Jarvis Landry does not play for the Dolphins yet. So even though they drafted him in the second round, they have to draft him here if they want him on their team. He makes a lot of sense for their system. He's played well for the Dolphins. I see no reason why the Dolphins wouldn't take him with their first round pick if they had to do everything all over again. With the 20th overall pick, the Saints would select Brandon Cooks, that receiver out of Oregon State. Brandon Cooks is no longer available. Saints are going to have to go someone else, and that someone else is going to be Allen Robinson, receiver out of Penn State. Another big guy, six foot three, jump ball receiver for the Jaguars. Gets open, has made incredible catches, and when he's healthy, he's been fantastic for that Jaguar team. The Saints don't have Brandon Cooks in this timeline. They need another receiver. They don't have Michael Thomas, obviously. Pretty much the best replacement possible for Marquise Colston is Allen Robinson. Love this pick combining him with Drew Brees. Could be an incredible tandem. Obviously, we'll never know, but what could have been? With the 22nd overall pick, though, the Green Bay, or excuse me, 21st, the Green Bay Packers would select HaHa Clinton Dix, that safety out of Alabama. He is no longer on the board. He is no longer available due to the fact that he was drafted, of course, by the Jets. So with this pick in the redraft, the Green Bay Packers select LaMarcus Joyner, a safety out of Florida State. I think we've done pretty much the opposite of what the Packers usually do. Usually their mantra is let's take a safety, let him play cornerback. And this time they're taking pretty much a nickel cornerback and making him play free safety. He's going to be a good replacement for Hawkland and Dix one of the most underrated players in the NFL. Now with the 22nd overall pick, we get to the Browns, and they selected Johnny Football. Johnny Manziel, a quarterback at a Texas A&M. Clear a bus from a mile away. I'm not sure how so many people thought he was going to be good. Um, I'm glad I was not part of that group. However, they need themselves a replacement for Johnny Manziel. So with this pick in the redraft, the Browns select. Nope, not a quarterback. They're going to go Malcolm Butler cornerback out of West Alabama, not a quarterback. And it's kind of funny, in the redraft, I actually had uh, Malcolm Butler going to the Browns at number 8 instead of 22, and I had Devontae Freeman to the Browns at 22. I think this works out kind of just as well due to the fact that he's kind of taken a step back as of late. But that's I really wanted him in the top 10 and Devontae Freeman here at 22. Um, if you're worried about the order being kind of weird, with you know Malcolm Butler being a better player and then Devontae Freeman and cornerback having more value than halfback and things like that. I wanted Malcolm Butler with the 8th pick. We're just going to do it at 22 for the sake of my screw-up. Good player, lockdown corner. He's going to help out and be a very good replacement for what Justin Gilbert could have been. With the 23rd pick, though, the Kansas City Chiefs would select D. Ford, a pass rusher out of Auburn, I believe. Auburn? Hold on. Auburn, yeah. And he has had his moments in the NFL. I won't say that he hasn't, because he has. He's put up some good sack numbers, but he just isn't that player that's consistent enough for him. They're going to go with a different player, and that different player is going to be Demarcus Lawrence, a defensive end slash outside linebacker out of Boise State. Very good player coming into the draft. I liked him a lot. He ended up going in the early second round to the Cowboys. I think the Chiefs get themselves a better pass rusher for the position, someone that has gone absolutely off this year in the NFL. With the 24th pick, though, the Bengals would select Darquez Denard, a cornerback out of Michigan State, and Darquez Denard has not played all that well for the Bengals. They've pretty much just taken a lot of cornerbacks who have never ended up being much. You look at a Dre Kirkpatrick type player, and of course they do have Adam Jones, but he hasn't been... Um, 
you know, a, he wasn't, I don't think, a draft pick for them. He went to the Titans, clearly. So, yeah, they just pretty much draft a lot of cornerbacks that don't really work out. But with this pick, they're going to take Kelvin Benjamin, receiver out of Florida State. I think he makes a lot of sense to pair with A.J. Green, just an absolute beastly group of wideouts for the Red Rifle and Andy Dalton. Not an elite receiver, but a big receiver, someone that does his job well, which is go up and get the football. Needs to work on hands, but next to a guy like A.J. Green, he really has the potential to blossom and become an absolute beast. I struggled a lot with this Bengals pick. It could be a number of different players. I just decided to go Kelvin Benjamin because I think it does make sense for them. With the 25th pick in the draft, the San Diego Chargers would select Pro Bowl cornerback Jason Verrett out of TCU. He is, of course, no longer on the board. He went a little bit earlier, I believe, um, as he was selected at number 10 by the Detroit Lions. Obviously no longer on the board. With this pick, the Chargers select Jeremiah Tatchew, an outside linebacker slash defensive end out of Georgia Tech. Another one of my favorite players in that draft class at outside linebacker. Um, slash defensive end. We're just going to call him edge rushers. I don't know why I keep naming both positions. He was either a second or third round draft pick um, for the Yellow Jackets. Chargers ended up taking him, and he has been solid in the NFL. I think worthy of the first round pick, and I know he's on their team already, but I think they like him enough to take him in the first round. He fits their scheme, and um, let's move on to the next pick. And that is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles, who selected another edge rusher in Marcus Smith, I believe the second, out of Louisville. Absolute bust. Absolute bust. So they're going to take Jimmy Garoppolo, a quarterback out of Eastern Illinois. Obviously, um, was quality with the Patriots in preseason and in games where Tom Brady wasn't available due to, you know, certain uh, suspensions. We're just going to call it what it is. 49ers trade for him. But in this redraft, he actually is a first-round quarterback instead of a guy uh, that goes in the second round to be a backup. Eagles get themselves their franchise quarterback, they hope. So we'll see how this plays out. Although, I guess we won't, but use your imagination, I guess. <laughs> Whoops. I think you guys just saw my Twitter notifications and not Jimmy Garoppolo, which is not uh, was not my intention. However, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, uh, definitely do that link. As always, is down in the description, twitter.com slash Designs. Check me out. Let's move on to the next pick. And that was going to be where the Arizona Cardinals selected Dayon Buchanan, a safety at the time, out of Washington State. He was obviously later converted to a money backer, if you will, where he plays inside linebacker, that safety, really cool, awesome hybrid position. But in the redraft, the Cardinals are going to select Dayon Buchanan, that hybrid money backer out of Washington State. It makes no sense to go with a different selection when he fits their scheme as perfect as he does and is so important to what they do with that hybrid system. Really, really cool player. Works for their offense, or excuse me, their defense so, so well. I don't see them going with a different player here. Not one with so much potential who's so young and fits that system as well as he does. No way. With the 28th overall pick in the draft, the Carolina Panthers would select Kelvin Benjamin at receiver out of Florida State. He has already been selected. He moved up a little bit further into the draft, a little bit higher up. Um, so that forces the Panthers to go with a different pick, and that pick is going to be Trey Turner, offensive guard out of LSU. He was, I believe, uh, a second-round pick for them, although he might have gone in the third or even the fourth. I can't recall. I don't think he was the second, actually. I think it was third or fourth round. Or shoot, maybe even fifth. I'm not, I'm not sure. He was in the th in the three to the five range. Um, good offensive guard for the Panthers. At least he has been in the past. He's regressed slightly, but he's still extremely young. Can come back to be the player that he was, which is one of the top 10 right guards in the NFL, which is not bad. He might still even have that. But good player. Got to protect Cam Newton. Trey Turner's the pick. With the 29th overall pick, though, the Patriots would select Dominique Easley. That defensive tackle beast out of Florida, he was so, so good before tearing his ACL. He's not been much for the Patriots. Um, went to the Rams, and I think then he went to the Seahawks even. I'm not even sure where Dominic Easley is now. Uh, I don't think he's still on the Rams, though. But with this pick in the redraft, the New England Patriots are going to select Jake Matthews, an offensive tackle out of A&M. 
He falls to them. They love it. He was a former top 10 pick in the draft. Obviously went to the Falcons in the top 10 at that number six overall spot. Falls to the Patriots. They get themselves a very, very good lineman to come in and play. I think they'd easily take this at the end of the first round. At number 30, though, the San Francisco 49ers would select Jimmy Ward, a safety. Um, and he hasn't been incredible for the 49ers. I don't think they would do this again if they had the option. So the 49ers with this pick are going to select an actual quality receiver for that abysmal receiving core. Um, it was just as bad at the time as it is now, if not worse. I think Devontae Adams will be um, a very quality player for them. And now a lot of his talent needs to be attributed to what Aaron Rodgers has done for him because Aaron Rodgers, I think, is the most talented quarterback in the NFL and also of all time, which is going to be maybe an unpopular opinion, but I mean, he has the highest passer rating of all time, the highest touchdown interception ratio of all time. He has an MVP and he'd have more if he didn't have the worst offensive coordinator, worst coach, worst system around him. He makes that team. He really does. And you've seen that this year. Now that they lose Aaron Rodgers, they have nothing. They have nothing. 49ers get themselves a good receiver, though. We're not talking about the Packers. We're talking about the 49ers. They're going to take themselves Devontae Adams, clearly. With the 31st overall pick in the draft, the Denver Broncos would go Bradley Roby, a cornerback out of Ohio State. And Bradley Roby has been somewhat solid, but not of what you'd expect out of a first-round pick, as he doesn't even... He's not even one of their starting two, which, to be fair... They're starting two cornerbacks are some of the best in the NFL and Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris Jr. There's no reason, but for that reason, they wouldn't go with another cornerback here, even for their nickel uh, scheme. So they're going to take Matt Paradis, center out of Boise State. And now I know he plays for them now. I know he wasn't a first-round pick, so they have to take him here if they want him on their team. A quality starting center, one of the best in the NFL. You got to take him here if you want him. He could easily go in the second to another team before you pick again. Matt Paradis is the pick here at number 31. And to cap things off with the last selection in the first round, the Vikings would go Teddy Bridgewater, a quarterback out of Louisville. He easily could have been the number one overall pick at the time. Falls all the way down the board to where the Vikings can get him with the last pick in the first round, as I believe they traded. I'm 100% confident that they traded uh, to get that pick. And with this pick, they still have it. They're going to take Teddy Bridgewater, quarterback out of Louisville. He was good when he started for the Vikings. He's been injured, has not played in a while. They're still going to take him with this pick. They still want him on their team. They still want him to be their franchise quarterback. And he can still be all of those things for the Vikings. That's the pick. That's the redraft. That's the draft do-over. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.